It's Friday the 8th of June 2018 and this is your EV News Daily. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world, a very warm welcome from London in the UK. My name is Martin Lee and I go through every EV article online so you don't have to. Before we get into today's news, just a quick message. Anyone heading to a rather large EV event this weekend here in the UK because I figure this is Friday's podcast. People are travelling maybe on Friday, uh, maybe on Saturday morning and you're listening to the podcast. So a quick mention to anybody heading to Fully Charged Live. You've seen the YouTube videos over the, over the last eight years with Robert Llewellyn and uh, more recently Johnny Smith as well. And now you can go to the live event and thousands of people are. I think I read something somewhere. It's 5,000 people or something. All EV fans are going to be, or people interested in electric cars and energy and transport. It's going to be going along to Silverstone, which is pretty much in the middle of the country, really. Uh, You know, yeah, where they have the Formula One racing. 16 live sessions and a carefully curated series of conversations with the fully charged hosts and panellists taking on all the big topics, plus all those big EVs that you want to see, the really famous uh, Teslas and the new Jaguar I-Pace, cars from Nissan, uh, the... A uh, little van, the ENV200, the taxi, the Black London taxi that you've seen from LEVC and loads more as well. Uh, they're all going to be on show. There's an outdoor area. There's going to be uh, indoor trade stalls as well. So, so many of the people who I follow on Twitter and have followed for such a long time as well. I won't be. Uh, from the moment the date was first announced, I knew I had two really big birthdays. Uh, to get to one a family birthday party, the other a 40th birthday of uh, one of our closest friends who we uh, went to university with many, many years ago. They are non-negotiable. We've worked out every possible travel plan to try and get there on the Saturday or the Sunday. It's just not going to happen. Gutted is an understatement. I was so looking forward to meeting and shaking hands and uh, just listening uh, to those people that, that you know, not only that I follow on on Twitter, but the people that I've seen on the YouTube blogs and people that are flying from all around the world to be there as well. <sighs> next year, I'll be there next year, uh, and I'm sure next year there'll be even more than the the 50 electric cars that they've that they've got uh, there this year. If you are still at a, a loose end for this weekend, by the way, and you're listening in the UK, uh, Patreon supporters can go for £17.50, uh, concession tickets for 20 and standard tickets just shy of £30. Uh, tickets are good for both days. Please go and support uh, the fully charged team because they do so much to advance the move to sustainable transport. All the details online, fullychargedshow.co.uk. If you're going, have a great time. More importantly, if you're travelling there, please travel safely as well. Uh, Take your time. There's going to be a lot of EVs all in one place. I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of a uh, a, a charging backlog in some places. That's all going to be part of the fun of it because you'll just get chatting to people who are going, oh man, I wish I could go, but I've known for a long time that ah, there's just no way I'm going to make it. Right, coming up on today's podcast, the Kia Nero EV is finally revealed to the public and Nissan are making an electric camper van. Want, want, want. But first of all, uh, the plans that I've talked about on previous podcasts, those of a switch for the World Rallycross Championship to electric power have now been approved by the governing body, the FIA, World Motorsport Council. Well, I first heard of plans for this last year, and then earlier this year, the invitations were sent out to various companies who might want to tender for the supply of the battery and the chassis for the World Rallycross Championship. Really significant news, this. It starts in 2020. World Rallycross is fast-paced, high adrenaline for the the drivers and the spectators alike who can get really up close and personal uh, with a great motorsport. And now they are going to be electric cars, eligible for both manufacturer teams and privateers. Well, every constructor will have the same battery and chassis package, which will be open for privateer teams to homologate as well. Now, we know that Williams are going to be providing the batteries for this, as they have done to uh, Formula E up until now, with Formula E moving to McLaren technology for the 18-19 season. In fact, some of those specs from Formula E are actually being used to derive the regulations uh, for Electric World Rallycross. 
The stats, by the way, two motors on these cars, one on each axle, and a total power output of 500 kilowatts. Well, moving on, and the Kia Nero has been, EV at least, has been revealed to the public. Uh, it's at the 2018 Busan International Motor Show this week in Korea. They're finally showing off to the public what you and I have been talking about for a while, since we saw the concept at CES and then some official pictures, ooh, what were we on last month, maybe the month before, as uh, Hyundai have done with the Kona. They've taken out the combustion engine and added a bunch of batteries. The charge point is in the front grille behind a kind of flappy slidey cover and the small LED headlights look very cool by the way, something that we're seeing more and more from EV designers. Of course, no need for air intakes to keep an engine cool, which makes the front of it look way better. As we've mentioned with the Kona, in the same way, the uh, Nero offers two batteries, the 64 kilowatt hour lithium polymer battery, they say is good for 279 miles of range. However, even though they're sister companies, it's not the same battery as is going in the Hyundai, which would be a fair assumption to make. In fact, more than, more than one, I think it's fair to say, EV blog that I've read have not only made that assumption, but written it up and said, both of them are going to be sharing the same sourced battery packs. Oopsie, nope, they're different. Different suppliers, different battery chemistry, which will do different things as well. I think the Kona uh, is, I think it's the LG Chem ones, which are slightly better performance. And then the Kia Nero, same size, 64 kilowatt hour, probably for a slightly better efficiency, I think. Uh, the EPA range hasn't been confirmed, so I would expect that to come down. Well, it will come down from what uh, Kia say. I would think about 240 miles on a 64 kilowatt hour pack. That is still better than a base spec Model 3, of course. Uh, now, the motor drives the front wheels with 150 kilowatts of power, and it's, um, I'd call it brisk, without being face melting, 0 to 60 of 7.8 seconds. You know what? That's quick enough for most people. Uh, well, that's the same for both battery options, by the way, power-wise. Charging speeds, oh yes, they've confirmed it a while ago, but it's happening. 100 kilowatt charge speeds, lovely. Well, the smaller pack is 39.2 kilowatt hours. That's going to give you 186 miles of range. And if you're anything like me, I always find myself thinking when it comes to these things, oh, I need the long range. I can't have the smaller one. No, I'd have the long range one. But when I really sit down and look at the journeys we make, I work two hours away. I was mad, right? I have a two-hour commute. But I do it on train. Electric train, but I do it on train. So my wife and I share one car. Now, she's a school nurse, and she drives between two or three different schools every day in her, you know, her patch. And she does like 30 miles a day. 186 miles on an EV <laughs> is fine in nearly all cases. Now, even if that range came down to a real world of, I don't know, it's a 40 kilowatt hour pack. It's a big car. It's not a massive car, but say 100, 110 real world miles. I mean, it's going to have some thermal management, so maybe a bit better. It's still going to be, as a Kia, really competitive on price. Well, inside we have some really lovely blue accents for the snazziness factor. And look out for the 7 inch touchscreen as well, with plenty of physical buttons all around the touchscreen. This is no Tesla minimalism inside a Kia. Well, there is an included wireless phone charger you get for the price and loads of safety tech like forward collision warnings and forward collision avoidance assist and smart cruise control, intelligent stop and go, lane follow assist, all coming as standard. Well, as for their version of autopilot, if you like, it's level two, so it's going to keep you in lane on the freeway slash motorway uh, with accelerating, decelerating, braking and steering, all up to 80 miles an hour. Well, Korean sales start soon with prices elsewhere announced later this year. Yeah, that's as specific as they're being at the moment. There are 5,000 domestic orders in Korea, so I would expect them to either service all of those first or actually maybe more likely a 50-50 split. So service half of them to the Korean market and half of them to the rest of the world, which is a, a big place to split out you know Norway are going to get a bunch first because it's a big EV market Europe's going to get some North America will probably have to wait well moving on and Reuters just reported General Motors will supply some advanced batteries to Japan's Honda uh, the companies both said yesterday a move that will significantly reduce the cost of the future EVs for both companies from 2020 onwards GM and Honda 
said they would collaborate on batteries, with GM supplying the cells and the modules, mainly for EVs, to be sold by both companies in the North American market. Well, a source familiar with GM's plans said its current battery cell supply, that's Korea's LG Chem as well, is expected to provide the cells for the new battery, uh, which is a mainly GM design. Well, the new batteries are expected to begin production in 2021. Uh, it looks like a classic win-win situation. The next-gen batteries are going to be higher density than those used, say, on the Bolt, for instance. Oh, well, moving on, and a horrible story, and I don't really want to update you on this, but uh, we kind of have to talk about it, I suppose. The driver of the Tesla, who was fatally injured, uh, uh, the car crashed, and the gentleman died in California in March earlier this year. It's confirmed that he did not have his hands on the steering wheel at the time of the accident, or for the seconds leading up to it. Said a preliminary report uh, by the NTSB, yesterday that's according to cnbc he was this is so horrible to talk about in a way but he was following a car and the um, cruise control was set to a faster speed than the car in front was uh, before the collision the car moved to the left which aligned it with the barrier he hit it was a, a left hand a left lane off ramp the car moved itself started moving left and of course when it moved out of the car that it was following, it started to speed up back to the speed of which the cruise was previously set. Um, no more details, preliminary, uh, and at this point we should let people get on with that, and uh, probably hypocritical saying this, and let his family uh, get on which it, it, with what is a horrible situation. But I do want to talk about these things because they affect all of where the technology's going, but it, again, it just seems horrible talking about technology when someone's lost their life. But that's the latest. I thought you'd want to know. Well, moving on to Nissan. And Nissan's, I think Nissan's hidden gem in their lineup is the ENV200. It's an electric van slash people carrier, depending on which body's on top of it. And it's recently been updated with the new 40 kilowatt hour battery, which has been found in the Leaf. Actually, it adds thermal management because they wanted to handle those who use it as a van. They rapid charge it regularly. So it has got some control over the battery. Well, Nissan has taken the covers off a new in-house camper van. Here we go. Camper van range at the 2018 Madrid Motor Show. Uh, the campers, according to this article in Auto Express, which are currently exclusively for the Spanish market only, I reckon that'll change, is including the all-electric ENV200 version. Auto Express say that all the camper vans offer an extendable roof, which the maker claims allows four people to sit and even stand in comfort, double bed as well, and a second double bed in some of them once the roof is raised. Inside the larger model, uh, there's a fridge and sink and a hob and a heater so you don't freeze. The camper van, uh, the ENV200 camper van, I think will be really popular with people wanting to cut their emissions whilst having that classic camper van road trip experience and maybe a bit of surfing, heading around beaches, jumping in. You know, we used to own a motorhome. And it's the, it is the best thing when you can just jump at the weekend and head somewhere. And, uh, I, you know, I've seen camper vans and thought, man, they look so cool. But an electric one based on the ENV200? Ah, I want one of those. Well, moving on to Daimler. And Daimler Press Office have been in touch with some news that the Freightliner trucks that they premiered earlier this week are two fully electrified commercial vehicles. Uh, there is the Freightliner E Cascadia. It's a heavy-duty truck. And the Freightliner EM2, uh, which is a medium-duty truck. And they uh, announced that earlier this week. Freightliner plans to deliver an electric innovation fleet of 30 vehicles to customers later this year for testing under real-world conditions. Hmm, a bit like Tesla are doing with their semi. Well, the E Cascadia has the higher specs, 730 peak horsepower. The battery is a 550 kilowatt hour usable capacity. The range is 250 miles doesn't seem a lot, and the ability to charge up to 80% in 90 minutes. Uh, the Class 8 tractor is designed for local and regional distribution. Now, the EM2 has less power, 480 peak horsepower. The battery is smaller, 325 kilowatt hour usable, and the range is 
not far off the bigger battery because it's a smaller truck, 230 miles. Well, the EM2 is their electrified solution for local distribution, pickup, delivery, um, food and beverage delivery, that kind of thing, last mile logistics. Now, what did Daimler Trucks Martin Daum say? Because he's been outspoken before on the Tesla Semi. If you remember, he said that what they're saying is physically impossible. Well, uh, it's impossible according to physics. He said this, and I quote, We are the undisputed global leader of the trucking industry, and we intend to remain in that position with electric trucks and buses, end quote. Well, you can't argue that they're leading at the moment. Um, he doesn't believe Tesla's technology exists. Mm. Uh, a reminder on the Tesla semi-range... 500 miles for their semi-truck, and that's 500 miles with earlier this week at the shareholder event, Elon saying they're already improving on that. So by the time the truck uh, is in production in 2020, it's going to be a lot further. What do Tesla know that Daimler don't? Well, as well as the Porsche Mission E, the recently unveiled Cross Turismo version is a more rugged, if you like, version of the same car. It's it's basically designed to fit your skis in for your weekend ski trips, if you will. And some of those early test mules have been stuck on a plane and shipped to North America for journalists to drive. BMW blog praised the steering and handling, but also said it's really, really fast. Now, they weren't allowed to drive it past 50 miles an hour. Come on, Porsche. They claim, though, that the 600 horsepower from dual electric motors uh, will do 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. More importantly, Porsche say 0 to 124 in 12 seconds. That latter performance figure faster than the Model S P100D. Well, the biggest trick up the mission ease sleeves, say the blog, though, is the fact that it can charge faster than any other car on the market. Uh, 800 volt charging, 350 watt, uh, uh, <laughs> 350 kilowatt charge speeds. 350 watt would take you a long time to charge, right? Uh, so 250 miles of range in 15 minutes. Now, more of those chargers are appearing very soon, especially here in Europe, actually, where they've got their act together. And there's a few charging networks, all very advanced stages, which will use those whatever we call them, super high power chargers. And finally, it's now possible to drive around Australia in an EV thanks to a comprehensive charging station map. The Tesla Owners Club of Australia released its round Aussie electric highway map, according to energymatters.com.au. The map is not complete yet. There are still some gaps in the fast charging stations and places where three-phase isn't available. As a result, uh, the Tesla Owners Club and the Aussie EVA, or EV Association, are offering something special. They're offering help to property owners. They will give you a 32-amp, three-phase electrical outlet free to any site which will help build and fill in the gaps of that round Australia route uh, with intervals of 300 kilometres maximum between each one. Well, the property owner must install it reasonably promptly it must be accessible, and EVs must be able to charge there. What a fantastic project. That's the news for today. Please do share the podcast with somebody who you might know who could be interested in this. All the previous ones are online, by the way. If you're a Tesla fan, and this is the first time you're listening, and you haven't heard yesterday's, it was an epic, as we digested all of the news and reaction from the shareholder event, the thing that drove the share price up 10%. All the previous ones are on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher. Uh, there's a blog at evnewsdaily.com, uh, SoundCloud and iHeartRadio podcasts. If you want to subscribe via any of those platforms, you get every podcast first and free and automatically. Oh, if you can rate and review, I know I always ask, I know it's a faff, I know it's a pain. Don't worry if you haven't got time. But if you have got time to rate and review... It just really helps out on those platforms. If you want to come and say hi on the socials, search EV News Daily. Do have a wonderful day. If you're heading to Fully Charged Live, drive safely, fly safely, travel safely. I will catch you tomorrow.